We're looking at pace 1098. It's the second pace in Algebra 1. <clears throat> algebra 1098. Um, I'm going to just do a quick review um, up through page 7 to get you ready for the first checkup, which is on page 8 and 9. All right. And I trust that um, some of this is a little bit review. If you've been through the level before this, which was um, 85 through 96, uh, some of the solving for equations was covered in there, but uh, maybe this is, and this is laid out differently, def for sure. I think there's there's a different author, and they kind of follow some different format, and it may seem uh, a little bit unfamiliar. Uh, just, I just want to explain on on a lot of the, throughout this book, this pace, they use a term called axioms, <clears throat> which makes it sound whoo. It's just a rule. It's just something that, you know, a property. Some algebra books call it a property. It's just something that's true and uh, that we can therefore use in solving problems, okay? So let me put this uh, paste down. And uh, one of the very first things I always encourage students to do in solving an algebra problem is to draw a line through the equal sign, okay? and divide it into two equal halves. So whatever is on the left has to equal what is on the right. And whatever we do to one side, we have to do the same thing to the other side. That's one of the rules of algebra, or axioms of algebra. And so if we follow that rule, we can get the right answer. So to, in your head you say, Mr. Inger, I already know that. I know the answer is three, yes. But let's talk about how we get that answer because um, if we can follow the same procedure every time, then it doesn't matter if we're dealing with variables or negative numbers, um, decimals, fractions, whatever, we can confidently get the right answer. So the rule is we undo what's being done to the variable. So since I have plus four here, okay, and I'm trying to isolate x, you're always trying to solve for the variable, then I need to, in the next step here, subtract four. So you see how I'm undoing? Subtraction is the opposite of addition. So plus four, I'm going to tack on this minus four. So on this side, I have to do the same thing. So as long as I'm doing the same thing to both sides, it's kind of like a balance, okay? And if I take off four, whatever it is, from this side, and I take off four from the other side, then the two sides remain in balance. And that's the goal here. That's what the equal sign means is balanced or equaled. Well, this is going to cancel this out, okay? So scratch that out. All that's left is x. x equals 7 minus 4 is 3. All right, so that's pretty easy. Um, I don't know how well this marker can be seen. Let me try, let me try this black one here. <clears throat> now this one is kind of weird because they have the X over here on the right-hand side. And we have a negative 12 in here. Okay, so <clears throat> one of the first things, again, is to draw a line through the equals. I want to get the X on the left. It's just, it makes the problem a little more familiar and a little easier if we keep the variable on the same side all the time. So it's a little awkward at first, as a, at least as a beginning student, to have the x over here. So I'm going to add x to both sides. All right, so plus x. And what happens here, <clears throat> negative x plus x is this canceling out, okay? Because I had a negative x and now a positive x, boom, it's gone. <clears throat> so now I have x plus 16 equals negative 12. So what do you think the next step will be? I'm trying to solve for x, I'm trying to isolate x, so I need to get rid of the 16. 16 <clears throat> is a positive number. And um, we have addition here, so I need to do the opposite. So what's the, what is the opposite? What, is, what undoes addition? Subtraction, right? So I'm going to rewrite this side as x plus 16, and now so take away 16. And on this side, I need to do the same thing, take away 16. So now this will cancel that out. So I'm left with just x equals, 
Now let's be careful here. Do you remember the rules? What is our rule for subtracting positive and negative numbers? We change subtraction to addition and change the second number to its opposite. So if I do that right here, this becomes plus negative 16. Now I'm adding negative 12 plus negative 16. I can just add and keep the common sign. And you know what? I'm not going to finish that one because I think that's one of your homework problems. So you can do that one or check back and see if you got that one correct. Now here's a challenging one. This looks kind of long. One of the tricks that the pace talked about. <clears throat> this, this doesn't always happen, although the pace is kind of included often enough so you get some practice doing it and you start looking for it, okay? And that is if you have the same term or the same number on both sides and it has the same sign in front of it, then you can just cancel it, okay? So I have here plus 12 and I also have on this side plus 12. Okay, can you kind of see that? I'm adding the same thing on both sides. Now I could go through the step of you know, writing minus 12, minus 12, and then get it to cancel. Or I can just see that because it's the same on both sides of the equal sign, I'm just going to pop it right out. Okay, I'm pulling both of these out of both sides, poof, and they're gone. Pretend like they're just little, you know, bubbles. And when they move away, they explode and disappear. They're gone. So what's left? I'm left with x equals 15 and minus 2. And obviously you can solve that, right? Okay. At the bottom, I think it was a page 7, it said to verify your answer. What that means is take the answer that you got at the top for each of these problems. And then you're going to take that answer and plug it in in place of x on the bottom and continue solving. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop there and we'll do another lesson after the checkup. I hope you do well on the checkup.